Hello coders! In the previous video in this tutorial, we developed a room lock feature that will eventually allow a user to escape. We ended that feature by connecting our app to an emulator or to a mobile device and checking our code to see if there were any bugs. One common issue occurs when we don't exactly type a source file name for a sound. If you were to misspell trumpet, for example, the player would not be able to find the trumpet sound file. So please double check the spelling of those file names if you're having any issues with your app. I did find one bug on my designer screen, and that was with my horizontal arrangement. I set my height to 40 pixels, and that was a bit too squished, so I'm gonna change it to 50 pixels now, and that should work a bit better. So for the next stage of our development, we're gonna to go to My Projects and we're gonna choose Save Project As. We're gonna carefully delete the three and change this to version four. Waiting a moment, we should see that change in the upper left-hand corner of MIT App Inventor. And in version four, we are going to create the first of several puzzles that must be solved to unlock and escape the room. So as you might recall, our app will make certain components and features visible and invisible. We are gonna keep this uh, room lock visible, but we're gonna now add a new component for a puzzle. I'm gonna go on the left-hand side of my screen to the layout drawer, and I'm going to choose a vertical arrangement. In the last video, we used a horizontal arrangement, so please make sure you're choosing a vertical arrangement. I'm going to click and drag that onto my user interface, dropping it below my horizontal room lock feature. I'm going to immediately rename this component. I'm going to shorten this up to vert ARR underscore puzzle one and click OK. I'm going to change the height to fill parent, click OK, and I will change the width to fill parent and click OK. And I think I'd like a background color that's kind of loud, so I'll choose orange. You can choose whatever color works for you. I'm also gonna change a line horizontal to center and a line vertical to center. For my first puzzle, I'm gonna choose something on the simpler side and that is a series of switches that will allow us to unlock the first puzzle and figure out the first character in our secret code. I noticed that MIT App Inventor keeps changing the mobile device size back to phone. So since I'm developing for a tablet, I'll make that adjustment here. Over on the left-hand side of my screen, I'm gonna click on my user interface drawer and I'm looking down here for something called a switch. I'm gonna drag out one, two, three, four different switches for this puzzle. I'm gonna leave their names as the defaults, switch one, two, three, four. I'm gonna make sure that they appear in the order I want, one on the top, followed by two, followed by three, followed by four. If one of your switches is out of order, notice you can just click and drag into the correct position. And then I'm going to change the text just to shorten this up a little bit for each component to simply switch one, two, three, and four. All right. Now I'm gonna add a button component below those four switches. And I'm going to rename that button component to button underscore check switches. Click okay. And over on the right side of my screen in the properties, I'm gonna change the text for that button component to check switches. And I'll change font size for that, 24 should work. I think that's gonna about do it for our first puzzle. So our first puzzle is gonna ask the person trapped in the escape room 
to figure out which combination of switches on or off will unlock this first puzzle. So currently all of these switches are in the left or off position and the user can then slide them to the right into on. It's interesting to think about how many different combinations there are here and how challenging this is. And because this is a computer science problem, we can think of it as a binary example. Binary refers to situations where we have only two options, yes or no, true or false, or in this case, on or off. And so my first switch has two positions, my second has two, my third has two, and my fourth has two. You can pause the video here and think about how many total combinations of these four switches can be arranged. After some thought, you hopefully should realize that if we have two times two times two times two, or two to the fourth, we have 16 different combinations here, which actually makes this puzzle rather challenging. With our user interface designed, we can now go to the top right hand corner of our block screen and click on blocks. We're going to now update our event handlers here. And so on the left hand side of our screen, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for this vertical arrangement puzzle drawer. Clicking on that drawer, we're going to come down to the bottom and we're looking for the set vertical arrangement puzzle visible. It's a dark green block. We're going to pop that into our first event handler from one of the earlier videos. When button enter room is clicked, we'll go to our logic drawer and we're going to grab a false. We don't want to see the first puzzle. Um, actually, no, that's a quick mistake. We do want to see the first puzzle. So when somebody enters the uh, escape room, we want the vertical arrangement puzzle one to become visible or to be true. However, if we duplicate that block, we want to now drop this into our screen one initialize event handler and change that to false. So since I made a mistake there, let me just double check that. When somebody clicks the enter room button, we want the vertical arrangement puzzle one visible to be true so they can see the first puzzle. However, when they first load the app, we want the vertical arrangement puzzle one visible to be false. Now we need to add some code that will check to see if they have the correct combination of switches turned on or off. So on the left side of my screen, I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm looking for the button check switches drawer. When I click on that drawer, I find a click event handler, which I'll drag out. And I want to check to see if they've arranged the switches in the correct positions. So again, I'll go to the control drawer to look for my if statements. We're going to choose a little bit different if statement. Last time we chose the second if statement, but this time we're choosing the first if statement a simple if and then, and we're going to click that if then into our event handler. We actually have a lot of things to check here, so let's get organized. We're going to come here to our logic drawer, and we're going to drag out an AND block. We're actually going to drag out three of these AND blocks. And this is how we are going to arrange them. We're going to put one AND block in the first socket of the second AND block. And then we're going to drag this third AND block and plug it into the last socket. So here we have a couple comparisons all joined together by AND. We have an AND in the middle, we have an AND on the left, and we have an AND on the right. And this leaves us with four open sockets for the four switches. I now go to the left hand side of App Inventor and I go to my switch one drawer. And if I scroll down, I can find a switch one on. And I can now right click and duplicate that and I can create a switch two on, right click and duplicate. And I can create a switch three on, 
right click and duplicate, and finally a switch four on. Now at this point, you can decide whatever combination of on or off uh, you want to unlock your escape room. In mine, I think I'm gonna do a simple combination of switch one on, then switch two off, switch three on, and switch four off. It looks like I've just caught a small mistake here, so that should be switch two, switch one, two, three, and four. If you want to check to see if a switch is off, you're gonna need one extra block to do so. So if you come back to your logic drawer on the top left, there's this not block, and you can plug that into any switch you want to check to see if the switch is not on. So for my code, I'm gonna have on, not on, on, not on, and now I can carefully move each of these switches into the right locations. Please make sure that your switches are in numerical order, otherwise you might be locked out of your own app or locked in your own escape room. So double checking, switch one on and not switch two on and switch three on and not switch four on. Once I've double checked those, I can now click this very long condition into the if block of my event handler. Next, I'm going to be setting some text and some visibility if those conditions are true. So I'm gonna come over here to my label secret and I'm going to scroll down to find my dark green set label secret text. I'm gonna plug that into my then socket come up to my text drawer and find a blank text block. If somebody has correctly solved the first puzzle and they have all of the switches in the correct positions, I'm gonna give away one character in the secret code. So you may recall that the secret code was originally four hashtags showing that there were four unknown characters but I'm gonna change the first character to a capital P. Remember in my app, my secret code is PIR8 or pirate. So that will show them that they're making progress towards escaping the app. Next, I want to go to my vertical arrangement on the left-hand side for puzzle one and clicking on that drawer, I want to look down towards the bottom for vertical arrangement puzzle one visible, and I wanna set that visibility to false. Remember, falses can be grabbed from our logic drawer. So that means when they solve puzzle one, it will give them one character in the secret code, and then puzzle one will disappear. It's now time for us to test and debug the fourth version of our app. So you're going to want to go to the connect menu, choose AI companion or emulator, and then make sure that the functionality of your app matches your expectations. So that means in this case, for puzzle one, make sure that your arrangement of switches one, two, three, and four corresponds with this logic within our event handler and unlocks the first character within the secret code. If it's not working as expected, here are a few things you can check. Number one, make sure that you have the correct component selected in these green blocks and you have the correct property selected in each of these green blocks. You can pause the video to double check and compare your code with my code. Also make sure that your switches are in order, one, two, three, and four. Also make sure that your logic matches your expectations. Remember this not block is how we check to see if a switch is off. Finally, on your designer screen, you can make sure that your switches are in numerical order from top to bottom. If they are out of order, that could cause an issue.